Peggy 7. From day one, it's definitely been uh, like sci-fi book covers. The colourful worlds you see on the front of like Asimov or Clark. So people like Chris Foss or John Harris, those kind of artists that would create these kind of science fiction worlds that, I, you know, I want to go there, I want to explore that world. And that's kind of the, the visual, the kind of vibe we're trying to get with No Man's Sky. So the inspiration for the creatures is mostly just from like real life, you know, like I have a huge Pinterest board just full of creatures from, you know, the world, glowing things and tendrils and, and you know, we kind of find different ways of using those in different creatures. As you get close to the centre, things become a little bit uh, more unsettling and things start to become unusual. That's how we keep that sense of progression that you want to keep going to the next planet because for me when I'm playing the game that's always what I'm doing I want to get to the next planet just to see you know what you know what what weird thing am I going to see next the sci-fi of the 60s and 70s something like Chris Voss right his ships are always what I would call bloated that they're sort of illogical when you look at them they could never have landed because they've got these round bottoms and stuff like that we actually have to make it work so we're trying to take these ideas and these crazy, vibrant colours and we're trying to make it into something that's real, that you could actually walk around, that would be good for like gameplay purposes. I think that's the, the No Man's Sky style. It's kind of artistic and, you know, it looks a little bit painterly, but you can hopefully feel like it's a real place. There's some sense of reality and scale that makes sense. When the guys, because originally there were four of the guys, um, kind of putting together the very base like structure of the game. When they started talking about creating a procedural game, it was pretty much the first time that like I'd heard that word used so frequently, you know. It's the first time I've like done any procedural art. You get much more value for like the individual parts you make. You're not making a part and then that's it. it that part gets used on loads of different creatures or ships and stuff. Basically, you have to uh, have the bigger picture in mind at, at all times because you might be making like a tiny piece of a creature or an NPC, say like an ear or something like that, but that ear could show up on like any creature, you know, at any point in the game. It's definitely been a big learning process, uh, but it's just so interesting to see all the, the kind of things that it comes up with, you know, creatures that we didn't think would be flying, be flying around or walking on two feet and you just, you know, you'd never as an artist, be like, oh, I'm just going to make this creature do this, but it's just really interesting to see all the, the variation. It's very easy to create a system that produces thousands of different looking objects or different looking trees and things, but to actually create a system that produces thousands of interesting looking objects, things that you actually, you know, as an artist, you might build them by hand, that's where the system becomes really difficult. So we have a really complex kind of colour theory system. So they all obey rules like leaves having complementary colours compared to the grass and things like that. And the same goes for kind of silhouettes. So if a planet's like very hot, we'll have things like everything kind of becomes a little bit more dried out. You'll get more sharp shapes. A planet has a personality. That's kind of what we're going for. The creature's appearance is directly tied into the creatures like, uh, you know, the, how they act and uh, how they move around the world. So a large creature will you know, move slower and like its animation is more lumbering. Um, as well as like a predator, if a, if a predator creature, you'll know it's a predator creature because it has like more spikes, uh, tougher skin, you know, bigger teeth and things like that. Everything we make in No Man's Sky comes from a foundation, so we'll have a set of blueprints. And because we're all adding to these blueprints, it means that I'll not only see results that I didn't expect from a procedural system, but also you know, Jake might have been involved, so suddenly, you know, I see some of Jake's things, and it's it's really cool from that point of view. Grant and Sean, they both um, are constantly sat next to us, basically, you know, we're quite a small studio. Their art direction really keeps us on target, you know, and keeps us uh, consistent. It's quite nice, they give us the freedom to kind of make things ourselves, um, but if there's something they know they want and in a particular way, it's nice to just be able to hassle them and say, is this what you want, and you know, it's a lot of back and forth like that. If you're working on anything creative, 
like you instantly lose perspective. I find it all the time, just doing my own work. So I think that's what me and Grant, to a larger extent, are there for, to just kind of keep that perspective, keep that fresh set of eyes. We definitely have a vision, but I think that's shared by all the team. I'm just there to just keep repeating the same things over and over again. I'm super excited to see what people find and what people really like. I'm hoping to see like animated GIFs and things like that of people finding weird things and sharing them with their friends and that kind of stuff because I don't know what they'll find. At, at this stage of a project, usually you'll know the game inside out, you'll know every single piece of artwork, you'll be ready for it to release. And at this stage in No Man's Sky, we are still landing on planets and still meeting a creature or seeing a planet and being like, wow. PS4 for the players.